You have learned every single thing that you need to know for third grade. Right now, we're gonna go into our next unit of study, which is all review for the EOG, okay? Um, so you have your packets, and in your packets, you're going to have um, all of our practice problems. So your practice problems start on March 23rd. Monday, March 23rd. Yeah. Which is today. Yay. So you are gonna be doing those problems in your packet by yourself and submitting them on the Google Classroom. But before you do that, we're gonna do four review problems with you um, just to get your mind in the math mindset of review. And then you'll be able to show us what you know on the Google Classroom. So we know that you guys don't have the warm up that we are about to show you in your packet. So it's yes. Flint's doggies. <laughs> they're, they're excited <laughs> about learning also. So what they want you to do is find a piece of paper. It could be somewhere on the packet that you have already or another piece of paper you have at home so you can do the warm up alongside with us. Um, there's a little space at the bottom um, where all the review questions are that you can try to fit it in if you don't have a sheet of paper. Yay! All right, boys and girls, so your first warm-up problem, I'm going to read it to you. Um, it says, Miss Flint is painting one wall in her house. Miss Austin told her to paint it yellow. If her wall is 12 feet by 8 feet, how much yellow paint does she need to buy to fill the whole wall? You are going to have two minutes to solve this. Again, looking at the screen, I can also reread. Miss Flint is painting one wall in her house. Miss Austin told her to paint it yellow. If her wall is 12 feet by 8 feet, how much yellow paint does she need to buy to fill the whole wall? You have about a minute and a half left. Keep working. Think of all the strategies that we have taught you. Even if you may think you don't know how to do it, we've taught you a, one strategy to figure it out. And I'm thinking, what operation am I using? I'm painting the wall. So what am I doing if I'm painting the wall? I'm using the paint and that's going to do what to my wall? Is it going around the edges? Is it covering it? There are a couple of key words in the question. All right, the second question it says, Miss Allen told Miss Flint that she wanted to paint the border of her yellow wall and make it black. How much black paint does Miss Flint need to buy for the border? She's using the same wall as the first question. I'll read it again. Miss Allen told Miss Flint that she wanted to paint the border of her yellow wall and make it black. How much black paint does Miss Flint need to buy for the border? You have two minutes. We have about right under a minute left, boys and girls. <clears throat> Thinking about what Miss Allen is doing, or what Miss Allen told me to do.
You got it. All right, so the first part of this problem, guys, said Miss Flint is painting one wall in her house. All right, so here's the wall in my house. All right, it says Miss Flint, to Miss Austin told her to paint it yellow. If she wants to paint her wall, if her wall is 12 feet by 8 feet, so it's 12 feet by 8 feet. Don't forget those units. And I'm going to paint the wall yellow. How much paint do I need to buy? Where does the yellow paint go? I'm going to paint the whole wall. Does it go along the edge of my wall? Or do I paint the entire wall yellow? So a keyword that helped me figure that out is where it says fill the whole wall. We want the paint to fill up the whole wall. We don't want it to be splotchy. We don't want it on the outside. We want the yellow paint to fill the entire wall. So when I'm filling something, when I'm covering the whole wall, I'm going to be finding the area. And to find area, I know that I multiply the length times the width. So my equation will be eight times 12, all right? Eight times 12, ooh, 12 is one of those double digit numbers that we learned how to use a box method for. So I'm gonna put 10 plus two because that's 12, right? And then multiply eight here. So I'm breaking the box up into two parts. And in this first box, I'm gonna multiply the eight times 10. Eight times 10, ooh, if I didn't know that, I could skip count by 10 eight times. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So eight times, ooh, 10 is 80. In the other box, I'm gonna do eight times two. Oops, eight times two is just a double of eight, so that is 16. So eight times 12, all I need to do is put the 8 times 10 and 8 times 2 together. 80 plus 16 is 96. How right. are we going to label our 96? Mm. With my feet, but I have to add some square feet. Sorry, I was say feet squared, but feet square feet. Because remember when we did area, we used our Cheez-Its, and the Cheez-Its were in the shape of a square, and we did that because the Square shape helps cover the entire shape. So and if we were to break this shape up into a raise, it would be made of 12 squares across, eight squares down. So we put 96 square feet. Okay. Stop. All right, so our second problem says Miss Allen told Miss Flip that she wanted to paint the border of her yellow wall and make it black. How much black paint does Miss Flint need to buy for the border? My first step again is I'm gonna draw Miss Flint's wall. I'm a very visual person and I like to see what her wall looks like. Again, it's 12 feet by eight feet. But this time, what Miss Allen told Miss Flint to paint is the border. The border, like we've talked about in school, this should be a review, is the outside of the wall. So what we just did with the yellow is we painted the inside and we got 96 square feet. Now Miss Flint is going to paint the outside of the wall and she's gonna paint that black, okay? So in order to find the border, you should have dun -dun -dun -dun, found the Perimeter, okay? The perimeter is adding up all of these sides so that Miss Flint knows how much black paint she needs to buy. Your teachers may have taught you how to add up these sides in a couple of different strategies, but as long as you added all four sides, you're gonna get the right answer. So I'm gonna do how I taught my class, but again, it may vary. So what I taught my class to do is take the two sides we know, and we already know that the side across is eight, Feet, and the side below is 12 feet. So we're gonna add those two numbers again. So we have four sides, so we need four numbers. 
12 plus eight, if you could count on your fingers, if you already know, because you made a 10, is 20. And then we have 12 plus eight, Bentley wants to know too, is 20. And then if we add 20 plus 20, it is 40. Now, 40 what? The difference between area and perimeter is since we are just finding the length of all the sides, like we learned last week in our um, measuring length lesson, we don't need to put square feet because we didn't break these lines into squares. All we did was add up all the sides, so we just need to leave it as feet. So we have 40 feet of that Miss Flint needs to paint her wall border black. All right, so here is our objective for today. Read it with us. I can find, find the product, product of a problem once I determine, determine the groups and amount in each group of a problem. So what is the word product mean? Who remembers what the word product means? I hope that you remembered it meant the answer to a multiplication problem. So what we're gonna be doing today is multiplying our groups and the amount of each group, which should always be an equal amount. So I want you to think about what's in your home and something that you might already have that's in equal groups. And show us what you know by sending your teacher a picture of something that's already in equal groups. So below is our phone numbers. Um, that way you can send us that picture. You can pause the video to write down our phone number so that you can go run around your house and find something that is in equal groups. All right. Okay guys, okay guys. So problem number one says LaRon has six pencil pouches. Each pencil pouch has seven pencils. How many pencils does LaRon have in all? So sometimes I just even make a picture and think about what's happening. So LaRon has six pencil pouches, all right? Here are my six pencil pouches, all right? And then it says that each of the pouches has seven pencils. So that means this pouch has seven. This pouch also has seven because each and every one of them has seven pencils inside of it. All right, when I look at this visual from a mathematical um, point of view, I realize that there is an equation that I can do for this. I have six groups with seven of something in each. All of these groups are equal and the same. All right, so I might know my skip counting. I might need to do equal groups. I might need to do my arrays. Um, if I don't know something, I can put seven dots and help myself count up to it. So six groups of seven, so it's seven, 14. If I didn't know what came next, I could do 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And then if I do know, I keep skip counting, 28, 35, 42. So how many pencils does LaRon have? He has 42 pencils. All right, so I do I see an answer choice that has 42 pencils? I do. It's answer choice D. All right, the second question. Um, again, you can. these are not in your packet. These are just reviewing for the questions. So you can solve this problem anywhere in your packet while Ms. Flint is going over it. It says Henry has a cupcake tin with six rows. Okay, I'm already starting to picture that. Each row is filled with four cupcakes. Henry used this expression to find out how many cupcakes he made. Four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four. What is another way to find the total number of cupcakes? So Miss Flint has started to write some things that the question has asked. Just because this is gonna be easier for me to think about it and show it to you in this method. All right, A, four plus six is that. So if I'm trying to find the exact same, like another way to say this, well, four plus six give me the same answer as this. I know four plus six is one, 10. Four plus four is eight, plus four more is 12. I'm already bigger than that, but also, 
Here I'm doing four, two, one, two, three, four, five, six different times. I have six different groups with four in it, and four plus six is not going to give me that. I'm also not subtracting in this problem. But like I did just say, I had six groups with four in each. So I think that this is going to be my answer choice. Um, D says six divided, sorry, I did that real quick, divided by four. And nothing about this is sharing six. Is sharing. I'm getting bigger because I'm adding more. When I divide my number, my answer will get smaller. So that's not going to be the answer choice either. So the correct answer is C. I got six groups of four. That's another way to say four plus four plus four plus four plus four plus four. Okay, our next problem says Gina has three boxes of juice. Each box has 10 juice pouches in it. Which question can be answered by multiplying three times 10? All right, so I'm trying to find a question that I could use to solve three times 10. Well, if I tried to do three times 10 and I know she has three boxes of juice and each box has 10 juice pouches in it, then I'm finding the total amount of juices if I'm finding three times 10. I'm trying, finding how many pouches Gina has. All right, so let's look at our answer choices. Could I multiply three times 10 and find out how many more blue juices there are than red juices? I there, in the question, it doesn't even mention anything about blue juices or red juices and comparing the number of blue juices versus the number of red juices. So I don't think that would be the answer. Yeah, that one's going to be our throw out answer choice. The next one says, how many juices does Gina have all together? Could I use that information? Gina has three boxes of juice. Each box has 10 juice pouches in it to answer the question, how many juices does Gina have all together? I think I could, because if I know she's got three boxes and each of those boxes has 10, I can count up how many pouches of juice she has. All right, Number, so B might be an answer choice. C, how many more juices does Gina need? Um, we don't have a total that, that, she needs. that she's trying to get to. All we know is how many she has. It doesn't tell us how many she needs. So that couldn't be an answer choice because we're not trying to figure out how many more she needs. And then answer choice D, how many juices does each person get? I don't even know any information about how many people are there. I just know what she bought and so or what she has. And so answer choice B is going to be our best answer. We can find out how many pouches of juice Gina has all together. And our last problem we're going to go over as we review this standard of multiplication says, Miss Flint gave seven of her students M&Ms. So I'm already making a picture in my head of what's going on. They each got four M&Ms. So I'm picturing seven students getting four M&Ms. She calculated the total of M&Ms with the expression seven times four. If she gives each student one additional M&M, which multiplication fact will show the number of M&Ms she used. So before, each student got four M&Ms. Now, thinking how many each student gets. So I have seven students. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven students, and each of them get four M&Ms. But then if I go back to the problem, and that's what I used to do seven times four, it says that if I give each student one additional m, &M so over here, I'm gonna give this student one more. And then I'm gonna give Lorvani one more. And then I'm gonna give Anthony one more. And then Gohan is gonna get one more. And then, because each student gets it, so Steven will get one more, and Jared's gonna get one more, and, um, Aaliyah. Aaliyah's going to get one more. Thanks. So now everyone's gotten one more. How many M&Ms did each person get now? Four plus one is five. So now each student has gotten five M&Ms because everyone got one more. All right. So the question said, if she gives each student one additional M&M and that we know is five, which multiplication fact will show the number of M&Ms she used. So seven times four was what we did originally. 
eight times four means there would be eight students with four each. Do I have eight students still, or up there now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I don't. So I didn't add one of my, I didn't add an additional student. Seven times eight would mean seven students with eight in each. I don't have that. Or D, seven times five. Oh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven students, and each of them are getting five. So the new expression should be seven times five. All right, guys, um, that is our last review problem. Um, we'll go over how to do your uh, practice in just a moment. All right, guys, so on your computer for your practice, you're gonna click where it says OA1, Questions review. It says 323 at the top as the title of the assignment. Um, so once you go in here, guys, it's really important that you put your name on here so that we know that you submitted this. Put your first and last name because, for example, Miss Austin has a Steven and Miss Flint has a Steven. So we need to put your first name and your last name. And then you're just going to scroll down and you're going to look at the question that's the same question you have in your packet and you're gonna come up with your answer. And once you do, you decide is it A, B, C, or D? And then you'll select your answer choice. Same for number two, number three, and all the way through to question number eight. You have eight questions to answer. Remember showing work in your packet. Once you're done answering it, you're gonna click next, and it wants you to put your name. So I'm gonna put my name. Kathleen Flint. All the answers. No, and it wants me to put all my answers in. And I think it, when you hit next, you, it just says submit. It says that you're finished. So after you press next, it'll say that you've turned it in. And it's really important to go back to um, the top and make sure that you press turn in. So Ms. Flint's just choosing random answers right now so that she can show you what it looks like. Don't copy the answer she's putting. D is not the answer to all of them. <sighs> Maybe some of them, but you're gonna have to figure out which ones. All right, so she is now pressing next. And, and it it'll say challenge complete. Click submit to finish. So you have to scroll again and press submit. And then you can also view your score. So it'll tell you what you got on the um, review. Okay, so once you press submit, it'll automatically come to us so that we can see that you completed it. Uh